Hey everybody, this is Laurie Meyer from stampedgreetings.com. And today in our stamp club, we are going to be making a very fun triple accordion fold card. I do have to mention before I go any further that this card was inspired by one that I saw on YouTube and it was shown by Lisa Curcio. And I will definitely, when I post this, I will put some information so you can go and look at her website and see some of the other projects that she has. It is a really, really fun card. Let me show you how this works. We have kind of a waterfall where we have three layers and it's kind of easy to see this way as well. This is how the card actually is put together and it has three different messages. I chose a stamp set and, and we'll look at that in a little bit, but I chose a stamp set that had three messages that go together. So it starts with happy birthday. Then on the next, some friendships are just meant to be. And then on the last, it's love you friend. So it is a continual message. And at the bottom, this is where I would actually write what I would like to write for the person who will receive this card. It does fold into a standard four and a quarter by five and a half. So it will fit into a standard A2 envelope. One thing I would like to caution you before we get into the detail is there are many layers of cardstock in this. So you want to make it kind of 2D. You don't want to do a lot of dimensional stamping and, and layering because it could get a little bit much to put into an envelope, but it will fit just fine. This is the card that I showed folks in our stamp club as an example of what I was going to make. And I want to show a slightly different version but a very similar card. It's the exact same outline in the same format. The same dimensions are going to be used, but you can easily see the difference. This is horizontal and it's going to open up horizontally. So you will have an option as you make your card to figure out which orientation you want. Do you want it to be more of a waterfall where it opens vertically and it's long? Do you want it to be horizontal and open so that it's more of a landscape? The one thing I will say about this landscape is it lends itself better to be displayed because you can put it on a, a mantle or a table and it will actually sit so you will see all parts. This is this being the waterfall one is a little bit more challenging, but it's very different. It's definitely a very unique card. So I just wanted to show you that. And I'm going to recreate the waterfall one just because it is different. And as I do that, I will talk through the slight variances, which are very obvious. There are two things in particular you need to keep in mind, but they're very, very obvious as you go through. So let's just jump in. I will be sharing this with everybody, and I'm going to kind of go through these in steps. So the first thing that you're going to need is a piece of cardstock. I use the Balmy Blue. I just thought it was really subtle and really pretty. Kind of looks like the sky, maybe, with the flowers. And you're going to cut that to four and a quarter by 11. What that means is you're going to take a standard piece of cardstock and cut it in half. A standard piece of cardstock measures eight and a half by 11. So if you put this into your paper trimmer on the eight and a half inch side and cut it at four and a quarter, you're going to have the piece that you need. So this measures four and a quarter by 11. And what we're going to do is we're going to score this. And I will keep these out while I'm doing the scoring so you don't need to memorize these numbers. But we're going to score at four places. So you're gonna see there's, there's one, two, 
three, four score lines. And I'm going to score this with you so you can see how it comes together. So I'm gonna put these, let's see if I can get everything into the camera. So you're going to score at four different locations and I will put these directions into the, um, where the YouTube will be. So into the comments. So the first one we're gonna do is at two and a half and you're gonna put your paper in so that you have the 11 inches as the horizontal. So the first one is at two and a half. And you know me well enough that I'm gonna do this fairly slowly, meaning I'm scoring fairly slowly. I wanna make sure that I can get all the way to the bottom without jumping in terms of that little track. The second one is at three and three quarters. So I'm gonna to go to the three and three quarter and start that and just go straight down. The next one is at six and three quarters. So I'll go over to six and three quarters and I will do my score. And then the last one is at eight and a quarter. Let's go over at eight and a quarter. And I'm gonna go ahead and score that. So one more time, two and a half, three and three quarters, six and three quarters, eight and one quarter, okay? So you've got your four score lines. And what we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and score and burnish these. And the way that I'm going to orient this piece of paper is I have it now so that it's four and a quarter on the top, 11 inches going down. This first score that I'm looking at is the one that I scored at two and a half. This is going to be the front panel. So all I did is I took it out of my scoring board. This was two and a half, and I'm just turning it uh, 90 degrees to the right. We're gonna be doing kind of a Z fold. So the first fold at that two and a half, you're gonna fold away. And I'm gonna do these very particularly. So that first fold, I'm gonna go ahead and burnish that. You do want some really nice burnishes on these folds because we are going to be doing some layering and we wanna make sure everything is working. So that first one was away. The second one, this is the one that was at three and three quarters. So the next one, you're gonna fold that toward you. And what I like to do is I'm just gonna lift up that first little burnished score line. And that way I can get right to that second score line and burnish that really well. So let's check and see what we're doing. So you can see we've kind of created that first fold, right? So we've got that first fold going. The next is the third score line that we did. This is the one that was at six and three quarters. You want that to go away from you. And you're going to go ahead and burnish that as well. All right, so that was our six and three quarters. So that means that the eight and a quarter, that's gonna to come toward you. And I'm gonna go ahead and flip this, just flip it over completely and burnish that. So let's see where we are. This is what we've got going on. This is the two and a half, the three and three quarters, the six and three quarters, and the eight and a quarter. So it looks like a lightning bolt, really, or kind of a double Z. Now, for those of you who love math, and I love math, just bear with me for a minute. If you were to measure and add the distance of where these score lines, how far apart they are and how far apart these are, and you realize that you're taking up twice that space, essentially what we've done is we have squished the 11 and a half in length. This is now 
I'm sorry, 11 in length. This is now five and a half. We've taken it down to half its size. That's all the math I'm gonna do. All right. So we have our card base and this is where you get to make a decision. Do you want it to be a waterfall card like this? Or do you want it to be a portrait card like this? So you can decide which way you want it to go. The other paper that you're going to need, so let's go to our instructions. So we've done the card base. We're gonna get all the paper together first, and then we're going to put the card together. So for the first fold, and when I say the first fold, I mean the first layer, so this. There are two pieces that really make up that layer, and it is a piece of color cardstock. And again, I'm going to use balmy blue, and I want it to be four by four. All right, so four by four is a piece that you need on that first fold. And then you're also going to need a piece of designer series paper. This is your choice. And the dimensions for this are three and seven eighths square. So the reason that we're doing square and the reason that we've got them just a little bit different in size is you're gonna see there will be a border around that designer series paper. It doesn't matter right now how I'm going to make my card, meaning if I'm going to do it in this orientation or this orientation, because I'm going to put that first layer together the same way. And I'm gonna go ahead and I am just going to adhere these pieces together. And it's a very simple, either use your liquid glue or your snail, whatever it is that you want to use and go ahead and put those two pieces together. Be mindful if you have a designer series paper pattern that has a pattern that needs to be vertical. Make sure that you think about that as you start figuring out what design you're going to use for your card. And the paper that I used is the Dainty Flowers from the Celebration brochure. And it took me, uh, it actually took all my willpower to cut this gorgeous piece because it is stunning. It started, this is half of the sheet. This is starts at 12 by 12. This is half, I cut it at six. And I just figured out where in the pattern, and you can see where I, where I snagged it. I just, I figured out where I could get um, the three and seven eighths by three and seven eighths from. But any, any design will work perfectly well. If you do not have that Dainty Flowers designer series paper, I highly, highly recommend it. So we're good on the paper part of the first layer. I'm gonna go ahead and set that aside. For the second layer, we're going to be a little repetitive because we're going to use another piece of balmy blue, or at least I'm using balmy blue, cut to four by four. So the first two layers have the same cardstock. I do recommend the same color, and I think it looks nice if you use the same color as your card base, but do what you would like, and you will find different combinations are ones that you really enjoy making. So I've got another piece of four by four, and I'm going to use the same designer series paper, but I'm going to use another piece from that paper. And this is the opposite side of one that has some really dainty flowers, like it's called. And it's a, just a really nice, this is Blushing Bride, and it's got a really cool floral pattern. And I'm going to go ahead and get these two pieces adhered together as well. One thing is important on this too is don't overpower the pieces with liquid glue. You may find 
sometimes when you use your liquid glue that your paper might warp a little bit. That's a good indication that you're probably using a little too much glue. And when that glue dries, it is going to warp your paper. So try to use less and make your lines a little bit thin. And that should help with any kind of warping. So right now, here's what we've got. We've got our first fold, this piece. We've got our second fold, this piece. We have our card base that's over on the left. And the last piece that we're gonna to put together before we start really constructing the card is for the third piece. Now you have options. I chose to use a different color cardstock. I wanted it to just kind of stand out a little bit. One of the colors that is featured in the Dainty Flowers Designer Series paper is Rich Razzleberry. So I decided that I was going to use some rich razzleberry and I cut that to two and a quarter by four. So notice the theme, the blue that we start with on the first layer is four inches wide. The next layer of blue is four inches wide. The final layer of cardstock is four inches wide. So we are gonna have that effect where everything looks like it's in a nice straight line. If you want to use the same color blue on the bottom or whatever color you're using, go for it. If you want something just a little bit different. Now also, you're going to notice that the size of the, the area that we have on the different panels is different. Look at how big we have here. Look at how much smaller this area is here. So we don't have quite as much room as we do on the other panels is on our third. So the last piece that I'm going to suggest that you get is a piece that is, I use basic white, and this is cut to two and an eighth by three and seven eighths. I went ahead and I stamped this. But I want to say something before you consider stamping. So let's just look at the two different cards and how that third layer is stamped before you figure out what you're going to use. And I'll also show you the stamp set that I used in just a minute. This is the card that's the horizontal card. Look at how I stamped on this card. The reason is that there's less room if I turn that piece so that I have the two and an eighth horizontal versus the four inches horizontal. And I did this by using the stamp and the stamp comes from the absolutely gorgeous Shaded Summer stamp set. And I was thrilled because I found three stamps, happy birthday, some friendships are meant to be, love you friend, all in the same set, all with the same font that I thought worked really, really well with this card. So on this stamp, the love you friend, what I did was I used my Stamparatus and I got out a marker. I used um, Mossy Meadow. And I used the brush end and I put ink on love you and the little comma and I stamped that. And then I moved my paper, cleaned off my stamp. I inked up the friend part and I moved my paper and I stamped friend underneath love you. And I did that intentionally because when I changed the orientation of this card, I didn't have as much room. So if you're really, really wanting to use a particular stamp, know that you have options. You don't need to stick to the size. It wouldn't have fit. It would not have fit on that piece. So I wanted to make sure that I was able to use it. And by using the marker, I was able to do that. So just be kind of creative. Don't, don't get limited by the way that stamps are presented. You can, you can do what you want. 
You do not need to stamp right now if you haven't decided what you're going to do. You can put this all together and then you can figure out what sentiments you are going to use. But I cheated because I knew what I was going to do. And I'm going to go ahead and put this piece together as well. And this is simply like we've done already on the other two layers. I'm just going to adhere these two pieces together. And get that prepped. And I'm going to just do my best like I have been on the other two to get this centered. When you introduce a different color cardstock and you are using something like this where there's a pretty big contrast, you know, the rich raspberry is a lot darker than that basic white. Um, I'm trying to be especially careful to get that centered. All right, so let's look at where we are and we're gonna start putting this little guy together. So we have our pieces. We've got our card base, the first layer, the second layer, and the third layer. What we're going to do is we're going to start with the top layer. So you're gonna take that top layer. And again, here's where you're gonna decide, do you want to do your card in a horizontal view? Do you want to do your card in a vertical view? And as I told you, I'm gonna recreate the vertical because it's a little different and you're gonna do nothing differently except two little things. And I'll talk about those. We've already done one of them actually, but I'll talk about those as we're putting this together. First layer, we are going to end up with something that looks like this attached. It is attached to that top piece that is bending. I want to make sure that I'm only getting glue on this piece. So I'm going to put my glue on this piece. But remember, the card base is four and a quarter inches wide, and this piece is four inches wide. So I'm not gonna put glue all the way to the edge, or I'm gonna have glue gushing, technical word, where I don't want it to go. So I'm gonna get out my liquid glue. This is the top level. And I'm going to kind of come in from the sides, try to get this so there's not a glob of glue, because again, I don't want this to warp. And I'm just gonna put some glue down here. Now I do want to get the top edge, or if you're doing it the other, orientation, the side edge, and the edge of my card, I want to get those aligned. And I'm just going to move this while the glue is still pliable. And I'm trying to, I'm looking on this side and this side, and I'm trying to get equidistance between the edges so that there's the same amount. And also I'm just trying to get it so that the two pieces are really flush up against each other. And there we've got it. There's our top piece. And again, the only difference is on this card, I attached it so that the edge versus the top is on that first layer. Okay, second layer. This is my second layer. And where I want that to be is tucked up right by that fold. And I also want to try, and I emphasize the word try, give yourself grace. I want to try to get the edge of that top layer and the edge of that middle layer lined up so the blues look the same. And again, what I'm going to do, I'm gonna kind of flip this up because I'm going to be putting glue where I want to attach this piece. Before you attach anything, what I like to do is triple check that if my designer series paper has a pattern, and this one does, that I have it in the right orientation and I have it going up. And where I want it to go is I want it to go kind of right here. And I'm gonna do two things. I haven't put the glue on yet, but I'm going to make sure that I can fold this all the way down. The last thing you want to do is glue this so far up that you can't fold it. And I'm also going to, when I fold, when I glue it, I'm gonna do my best to get those 
side pieces, those two blue pieces to line up. And that's why I like using the liquid glue on here because you have that little grace. So again, I'm not going all the way to the edge because I don't want to get glue gushing out. And I'm not going to put a heck of a lot on here. Just kind of getting it around the edges. And then I'm going to quadruple check that I have everything in the right orientation. I'm gonna go ahead and tuck that up. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to make sure that I can fold that over. So I'm folding that over, making sure that it is gonna fold and it is going to fold, that's good. And then I'm also checking to make sure that the blue lines are pretty much in line. That's the second layer. And you can give that a nice little burnish with your, your hand. So we've got the top layer. We've got the second layer attached. Now we need to do the third. In a perfect world, when you put the third one on, I want to show you where we're going. In this card, I've got the third piece attached. So when I open it up, you can see that it's a different shade. When I close it, you really can't see that there's anything underneath there. It is butted up against the top and it's folding without a problem. And it's also lined up so that you really don't see it under the blue. That's kind of where we're going. If you don't get it there, again, give yourself grace because you're gonna be the only one if it's not perfectly aligned, you will be the only one who knows. So to get that third one on, I'm flipping up the top, I'm gonna to flip up the middle, and I'm just going to sort of dry fit this. Dry fit means you haven't put any glue on and you're just, you're figuring out where you're gonna go. What is it that you're aiming for? So I wanna get that piece in there and I wanna get it so I can't see it. That looks pretty good. All right. So now I know where I'm going. I'm gonna go ahead and put some of that adhesive on. And again, this is very important. This is not going to be on the entire piece, right? Because this piece, unlike the others, the other two have gone over the edge. So I can put glue all the way down to the bottom of the top piece and all the way down to the bottom of the middle piece. I can't do that on this one because it's, it's not big enough. So visually, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my piece on here first and I'm gonna put my finger at the limit of where I'm gonna put that glue because I don't want it to go any further. And it's just a good visual to make sure that I'm not gonna get glue where I don't want it. And that's about all the glue that I'm gonna need. I'm gonna take this piece, quadruple check that it is in and it's in the right way that I want it to be. First thing I'm gonna do is make sure I can fold it. I can fold it. Then I'm going to look and see if I can see it on either side and I can see it a little bit over here. So I'm gonna just adjust that and I can still see a teeny bit. So I'm adjusting it a little bit more and now I can't see it. So I was able to move that around because I was using the liquid glue and I've got it tucked up right at that crease. So I know it's going to fold. So I've got my three folds done as far as the paper. And if you're doing this with me and you kind of feel that card, you're gonna see that it's definitely thicker. In some places I've got four layers of cardstock. So a little bit more, about twice as much really as a normal kind of card. Um, I'm lying to you. I've got three layers of cardstock, but I've also got designer series paper in there. Now you can finish this card however you would like. And let me just show you what I did. I'm going to mimic this and I'm just gonna give you a couple little tips and tricks along the way. 
I ended up using some Blushing Bride cardstock. I wanted to pull out the color in the designer series paper that's down here. And as I mentioned before, I found a stamp set that had three sentiments that were together incredibly well. I stamped the happy birthday in rich razzleberry. It's kind of hard to see the rich razzleberry on there, but it is because I also wanted to pull out some of the color in the designer series paper on the top. And then to punch out that sentiment, I used the scallop oval on the double oval punch. I love this punch. It is incredibly versatile. I tried to use the smaller oval and it was too small for the sentiment. So I decided, all right, I'm good. I'm gonna use the scallop one. And then on that front panel, I've got a little bit of room to put some height. On the other two panels, I don't suggest that you put a lot of height because when you fold everything down, it is not gonna fold on itself incredibly well. So if you're going to do layers or anything that, that has dimensionals or anything like that, my suggestion for this type of card is do that on the front and save the middle for twine or we have some embellishments that are a little bit on the flat side and they will work just fine but I'm gonna add some dimensionals to this. And then I'm just gonna kind of figure out where I want that to be and do my best. I'm looking at the happy and trying to get that sort of kind of straight and put that down, okay? I'm gonna come back and I'll put some embellishments on that in just a couple of minutes. The second layer is where I added the really nice sentiment. Some friendships are just meant to be. And again, that came from the Shaded Summer stamp set. And one thing, this is another tip or trick that I want to bring up is, and this is gonna depend on which way you're making your card. So I'm gonna bring the two cards in that I made. This is the one that's going vertical. This is the one that is going horizontal. Notice a couple of things, and we're gonna, we're gonna add these pieces of designer series paper, or at least I'm going to. On the one that is the waterfall, the vertical, you've got a lot more space to put your sentiment. You're working with almost four inches. If you want your sentiment, if you're doing it on a horizontal, if you want your sentiment to be hidden by that first panel, you're not gonna have quite as much room because you don't want that to show. So just be mindful of how big your sentiment is, or maybe if you're die cutting it, how big that die cut is. This one worked perfectly. And this comes from the painted labels dies. I put them with my painted poppies stamp set because theoretically they go together, although it's kind of interesting. There really aren't any shapes that cut out these pieces, but I packaged them together anyway. And I used this die. It's really, really nice. It gives a really cool edging. And I, I liked the straight lines and the other lines. And then it has a really fun little beveled side. But again, be mindful when you are figuring out what you're going to use and how much room you have, kind of what you want to do with it. Also, when you're putting your sentiment in, and I'm going to do the one I'm making now just a little differently than the one I did, I want the sentiment to be able to be read a little bit better. So I'm going to pull it down. I like this, but I want to pull the one that I'm doing down a little bit more. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the card. And this again, since we're not trying to get this to be thick with a lot of layers, I am just adding this with a little bit of liquid glue. And if you wanted to use snail or whatever, if you don't like liquid glue, 
but my goal here is to not get this to be bulky. And I'm gonna eyeball it. I'm gonna try and get it straight. I'm also gonna try to get it in the middle. And if it's not, I am just gonna let it go. And I always turn it sideways just to see if it's kind of straight. And I'm lining it up visually. And that's good enough. All right. The other thing is, and this is a if you want to, this is all an if you want to when you get into the decorating part. I thought it would look kind of cool to break up the color. So I decided to put a piece of designer series paper on the bottom of that second layer. And this was scrap. This was from me cutting out the piece that I used on the front. And I thought it was really pretty. It has some really nice little designs. This is an inch wide by three and three quarter inches long. And it fits in that really, really well. So it's an inch wide, three and three quarter inches long. So I'm just gonna, again, you're gonna use a lot of glue or your runner, whatever it is that you're using to get these layers going. And this is me. And I was just trying to use up more of my scraps and thought that it would be a really pretty contrast. And I'm just going to close up that top and put this in the center. I'm centering it on all four sides and I'll come back and I'll put a piece of twine on there in just a, in a couple minutes. Now on the one that I did that's horizontal, the only difference on that is I made sure that the pattern is going horizontally. So be mindful of that when you're putting things together. All right, the third level I left alone. This is up to you. If you want to add things on that third level, you certainly can. And it's really dependent upon what you want your design to be. So we have some embellishments. And I'm going to use some new embellishments and some old embellishments. And the new ones that I'm going to use are from the new mini catalog and they're called Loose Daisy Embellishments. And they are way too fun. They are really easy to use and very forgiving. They're pretty thin. Um, I put mine on with some glue dots. And I'm going to grab a couple of these. And what's also nice, and I learned this trick yesterday. I was on an event yesterday. And one of the ladies who was demonstrating got out her little snips. And you can probably see on here, these have a little leaf. Let me hold this up. They have a little leaf. Probably can see the yellow one better on the end. So it's, it's that little green. I don't want the green. I just want the flower. So what's really cool about this is whatever resin or I don't know what they're made of, but all you need are a pair of scissors and you can snip off what you don't want. So if you snip off what you don't want, it's going to snip off a little bit. Um, I can use a glue dot and actually put this onto the card. I'm just going to get three. I've got two yellow ones and one white one. And then I've got my little glue dots and glue dots and I don't always get along incredibly well. We have this sort of love-hate relationship, but that's okay. So I'm just putting a glue dot on the back of one of these and I'm going to kind of tuck it up underneath and then I'm going to I'm not going to put all the embellishments on because you're going to get the idea in just a minute and I don't want to bore you to tears as I'm putting all this stuff together but you'll you'll get the picture and I'm going to kind of put these on the top and the bottom of my little happy birthday so you'll see how those are added in. They're really sweet. They're really small. They don't add a lot of bulk, which is why I can 
also, if I want to add them on the second layer, I can do that without a problem. And again, I'm not going to completely put all the embellishments that I'm going to use. I'll show you the finished one, but you're going to get an idea in just a sec. And I'm just going to go ahead and add that on. All right, this glue dot and I are definitely having an argument. And I'm going to win this, but I have to convince it. So as I mentioned, I would not put a lot of layering on the second layer. You don't want it to be too, too high, but these are flat enough that you can easily add them. Another embellishment that is super easy to add without putting a lot of, of height is the butterflies that we have, the um, brush, brushed brass butterflies. It's like Peter Piper, peck, that one. Um, very hard to say, but these are also really, really nice to be able to just put in and add a little something when you're finishing off a card like this. They're nice and flat. They don't add a lot of bulk. So I'm gonna put one on the middle. You can tell I need to order more because I am just about out and I'll have him flying right there. All right, so the other kind of embellishment that I used was I wanted to dress up that middle part just a tad. And to do that, I used some linen thread. And this is nothing fancy. Um, when you buy linen thread, it's gonna come on this spool. I know you know this, if you run it through your fingernails and just straighten it out a little bit, it will cooperate much, much, much better. A tip that one of the ladies who is on our call right now gave uh, probably years ago, is brilliant if you want to attach twine to your card. I'm going to use a glue dot and I'm actually going to put that glue dot about in the middle of that piece of green and I'm not going to take it off just yet but that is going to help me anchor where I want my bow to be. I'm going to take my twine, flip that over. I just want to get the, the linen thread around that middle piece. I want to give myself enough to tie a bow and I'm going to wrap that around a couple of times and get it so that I have it wrapped, but I also have enough on either end. I've got enough on this side and I'm going to cut this to, let's see, probably about right there. And that will give me enough to tie my bow. And then I'm just going to scooch that little blue dot in a minute out of the way. But I want to get my loose end underneath the wrapped twine. so that I'm starting to tie a knot. So I've got the loose end on the left and the loose end on the right. And I'm just gonna scooch them out of the way and I'm gonna take that piece of wax off of that glue dot. And now what I can do is I can make sure that when I am pulling everything together, I'm just gonna push it onto that glue dot and look. Now I don't even need to hold it. I've got my hands free and I can tie my knot. And it is one of the most brilliant, brilliant suggestions. And I'm being incredibly serious. So I have my hands free and I can tie my bow and the world is gonna be great. And it is just the easiest, easiest way. My husband to this day, makes fun of me and the way I tie my shoes. This is an honest, true, true, true story. When I was a kid, my dad was in the Air Force and we lived in England. And I learned how to tie my shoes by watching Captain Kangaroo. Now, don't ask me if Captain Kangaroo did it right or did it wrong, but my husband swears that I do it backwards. So maybe somehow 
when Captain Kangaroo was doing it on TV and the way that I was seeing it when it was coming through on the TV was backwards. But I tie my shoes the way I was taught by Captain Kangaroo many, many, many years ago. The only difference that you're going to see, and this is the card that I showed at the beginning. This is the card that we've been making. The only difference is the card on the left has a couple more embellishments. So I will go back and I will add a couple more embellishments to this card. But other than that, it is the exact same thing. The only difference between the two cards that I showed you at the beginning, other than the fact that one is going landscape and the other is going vertical, is the embellishments. I ran out of the butterflies, so I couldn't use those. So I decided on the one on the left that I was going to use two kinds of rhinestones. I used some of the champagne rhinestones, which I think are gorgeous, and some of the regular rhinestones. And I just put those in various places. And um, I thought this was kind of fun, where I've got just a couple of rhinestones down at the bottom on the second layer. Didn't want to really crowd this because there's not an awful lot of room. And then on the front, put some up in the, the top. And this is really pretty, I think, as well, because when the card is closed, you can see those gems, all of them, at the same time. So that is it, the triple accordion fold card. And again, so many options with this, so many colors, and even the orientation, the way that you want to make the card. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you make this because I think you're really going to like it. And I think the folks that you send it to will like it as well. It's just a little bit different. Until next time, happy stamping.